and famous mansions and whatever their little hearts desire. They can have all that stuff and still the population can be free. That, that's my gripe, okay? I don't get that. that. That just shows me these people, you can't work with these people. It's a fight to the finish, okay? That, this is what they've decided. It, it's, it, it's, you know, it's a death struggle. In their minds, okay. The only one, you know, one side comes out of this thing alive, so they're playing shoot 'em up with us, and we want to play tiddlywinks. That's what I mean, like economics, like Donald Trump. Oh, we're going to bring back jobs. We're going to get rid of these, uh, you know, hungry immigrants and all this. I, I get it. Yeah, you know, all right. That would be good for the blue collar American, you know, to some degree, and it'd be spotty and inconsequential in the overall big picture of the economy. Uh, but, you know, I, I can understand his thinking. But you, what I'm trying to do is convince people that have more influence than me, if I can reach anybody, if word little bird gets out there and talks to people, okay, like Alex Jones, like Donald Trump, then this is what I would say to them. I would say you've got to think of the big picture. Understand the monsters you're up against and the fact that they do still have power and where that power resides. It's in the printing of the currency, the money, okay, all our problems, these dubious wars we're involved in. I'm not talking, I, I, I make the distinction between a dubious war and a righteous war. Because we all know that there are certain times, certain people need to be thrown down. They need their butts kicked and all those followers, those deluded followers, those people like the Nazis, for example. So, you know, I, I'm making that distinction very clear. But we don't need, you know, 22 troops a day taking their own lives because of whatever happened in these places, okay? Whatever they saw, whatever they did, whatever, whatever, okay? It's not okay. It's a dubious war at best that we shouldn't be over there. We don't even know what the hell we're doing. What have we accomplished? What have we achieved? To what avail has this been for America, for anybody, or the Middle East, North Africa? None. None. It's just it, 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 it's created horrendous chaos and crises and, and death and devastation and destruction. That's it. But you see, it gives these evildoers more power because, you know, they create this chaos. They're deliberating on how to impoverish the people and keep us down, keep us repressed, keep us oppressed, keep us persecuted. And that means everybody. That means good communists, good socialists, good capitalists. Good liberals, good conservatives, good men, good women, good Democrats, good Republicans, good human beings, man. They hate us. These are haters of humanity. That's what we've got to get through our head. These monsters that we are, we're up against are. They're, they're dangerous, man. And they don't want, they don't like us. And they don't want our standard of living raised. They don't want us to have economic financial security. They don't want that. They want the opposite. They're mean. They're fine. They've abandoned their conscience. They don't care about God answering to God. In their minds, they are the ultimate. Their God is Satan, whether it's witting or unwitting, awares or unawares, conscious, semi-conscious, subconscious, unconscious. I don't know. Whatever the case may be, that's God's business. That's his domain, territory. His, that's his venue. Okay, that's, you know, he's got to deal with that. I cannot. We cannot as human beings. We've got to leave certain criminal people. We've got to protect ourselves, defend ourselves, and we can we can <coughs> we can confi confine them if we can by law, because we know often guys like George Soros are breaking international law, what they do, inciting riots and all the violence and all this, the destruction of property, private and pro and public property. Okay, they're doing illegal things. Not of course they're immoral too. Okay, so there's a lot of people that should be confined. They should not be free. I don't think Al Gore should be free until he tones down this weather alarmist rhetoric that involves the population. Until he, we start hearing him talking about disruptive technologies out there. Why it's disruptive. Start being logical. Make some sense. Tell us the nuts and bolts. The oil company's involvement in all this. Why they don't want this technology. Again, it's all about money. All about money. So they would they would rather kill 90% of the people, keep their position in place, their money through deceit of the masses, okay, than to have this thing turn around, to have the tide turn, to have the ship turn around, to have the age turn, to have God's will done on earth, okay? That, that That's it. I mean, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad, but that's where their heads are at. 
That's satanic. In my mind, that is overcome with Satan. So if you're on that side, remember what side you're on. You're against humanity, and you will answer to God for you the beliefs you've chosen to adopt and embrace. Okay, that's what we will all answer for, our belief system, because that's where everything starts. The words that come out of our mouth start with the beliefs that we have chosen to embrace and adopt in our own thought system. And then it comes out our mouths, and then it comes out our actions and our behavior, you know. So we've got to understand the stuff that God's really concerned about. You know, the little sins in our lives, I'm not going to poo-poo, you know, the influence that little sin has. I mean, it's not good. Jesus said that, you know, it's not good, none of it. You know, he's talked about adultery and how bad that is. But he talked also about how one person can cause somebody to commit adultery. I mean, this is, you know, a man who leaves his wife and all this, or, you know, I guess vice versa, a woman that leaves her husband and, you know, causes them to commit adultery. So, you know, you get kind of a scapegoat. You can blame the other guy for, hey, you bailed out on the marriage. You made a vow and all this. But, you know, we're all in this fallen state, so we all need to embrace forgiveness. Forgive ourselves. And forgive others. Jesus said, you know, with a marriage and divorce and all this, he has called us to peace. So you've got to wish well. When you pray, you pray. Even if your wife or your husband abandoned you, you wish them the best, genuinely, sincerely, because you're before God wishing that in prayer. You're blessing them. You're blessing everybody, friend and foe alike. And especially somebody, I mean, look at the mother of my children, gave me three beautiful children, seven of the happiest years of my life. You know, and I'm always going to love the woman. I'm always going to respect her in a very deep and profound way. That's a beautiful thing in my mind. That's the peace that God gave me I can have for her genuinely. I'm a well-wisher. I wish her the best. I hope she finds happiness wherever. And I would hope she was wishing that for me too. You know, that she's got that kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. That's what we should all strive for. But all these things, you know, all the problems we have, it's all from Satan. It's all the money, man. It's causing all our problems. That, that's the stuff God cares about is our, you know, our behavior in business affairs, okay? How, how we believe, okay? All this stuff, all these dynamics in our culture, the working classes. We've got, you know, the lowest class, right? And then, you know, the welfare recipients, right? But that's your, all your minimum wage workers. If you're living in New York on minimum wage and your rent is two grand a year for a flat, you know, the government's picking up 1,800 of it, giving it, put it in rich dad's pocket. When they say your share, you know, is only $200, that's all you can afford being on this minimum wage job. You need the rest to pay your other bills. So you understand how this thing, the madness, you understand the social welfare system depends on the poverty. Depends on the problems continuing. You, you understand the madness here? And guys like Rich Dad, they depend on it too because this is a huge subsidy to these people, okay? And even if they don't accept minimum, uh, if they don't accept Section 8 vouchers in, in their rentals, the entire industry is affected. So the prices are much higher. So if, if, if for example, if Trump did slash Section 8 spending, housing prices would plummet overnight guaranteed promise it's just the way it is either that or you're going to see mass homelessness and a lot of landlords losing their butts okay completely losing their behinds but remember you're up against a lot of landlords that are well healed they've got their properties paid off they could afford to reduce their rent by half and still they're going to survive but a lot of other new newbie landlords that came on late to the bandwagon they're not going to make it they're going down the tubes okay because they're not going to be able to afford to pay their mortgage anymore that's what would happen in that one instance if trump really wanted to fix things he'd start there the housing is critical because if you can reduce the cost of housing it'll create a chain reaction in reverse instead of inf causing cost of living inflation with the housing costs always going up so other things have to go up it would be in reverse, so it would cause other things to go down, okay, automatically. This is what would happen if the government stopped meddling, stopped interfering, stopped exacerbating the problem so much. They said, no, we're bent on fixing it. So we're going to slash the budget in half, and then we're going to take half of that money. Uh, so, in other words, maybe cut it in three quarters, what the current $50 billion a year, so instead of $50 billion, say we're only given Section 8 $12.5 billion annually, and then take the other $12.5 billion and start building fixes, permanent housing for people, okay? And then they can pay the same way they're paying Section 8 now, by paying a percentage, paying lower, whatever, whatever they can afford, okay? 
The difference is it's going to be fixed and your taxes are going to keep going down and down and down. Taxes, it's all about money. Devil's in the details, right? So I think I've about uh, covered the bases on this, and I'd like to get back into a few of my notes here. But um, I recently I watched an episode of the uh, People's Court, you know, with Judge Marilyn Millian, and. Uh, this poor guy, real nice guy, the uh, the plaintiff, he was suing this mechanic that sold him a car, and the car um, didn't last, and he tried to blame it on the oil change somehow, that they did something wrong, and the guy was driving interstate, and, uh, you know, so he lost the case. Long story short, the plaintiff lost the case. Real nice guy, you know, funny guy, kind of a ding-a-ling. But uh, the, uh, the mechanic guy... Um, upright noble kind of character and uh, you know in light of the fact that he had won this case he had this car and uh, it was a he was a better car <clears throat> than the one the guy uh, you know blew the engine on that he was you know thought it was the mechanic's fault and at the end of the court you know when all was said and done you know, the guy uh, said he believed in paying it forward, and this is why he was doing it. And it was such, to me, it was such a beautiful thing, so powerful. It was an act of God, you know, an act of good. And the guy, the, the recipient, you know, the plaintiff, he was getting choked up too. I mean, everybody was because, you know, this is, this is what we have to understand is going to bring us happiness. If we care about others as much or more than ourselves if we start being charitable and sharing can you imagine the world we could live in the vast wealth and prosperity and freedom for all of us we can have that that's what god wants for us that's what good wants for us so even if you're an atheist you can understand these principles you know and any anybody seen that show trading places you know kind of like that i mean we all got to try our best to see through the eyes of other people and act on that as best as we can. At least fight the good fight in that regard. Work toward that means, to that end, to where we can all be free and live together in safety and security, peace and prosperity, freedom, happiness. Okay? That just grows on itself. Grows on itself. We do what we want 24 hours a day. When we serve, it's on our terms. It's because we darn well want to and nothing's going to stop us. That's the world we could have. But it doesn't involve a false competing God. It doesn't involve Satan. It doesn't involve money. You know, these cigarettes, I'm not smoking pot here. This is tobacco. Just throw out an FYI there, anybody thinks because it's a roll your own. I put them out and I smoke them. I'll smoke one cigarette four times. Trying to cut back. Want to live, you know, I don't want to be sick. So I, uh, I kind of mix up my current events with talking points, you know, and uh, one of them was that, you know, King David, you know, the story of King David. And what he did with Uriah the Hyatite, I mean, this was a miserable thing, what he did. And King David's soul was cut to the quick, okay? He was hurt so bad, not physically, but he was hurt metaphorically. I mean, he was hurt in an invisible way. His conscience was seared, and he was shamed by what he had done. Can you imagine what he did? He fell in love with this woman, Bathsheba. And she was married to this guy, Uriah the Hyatite. So King David, being in charge of the military, put Uriah the Hyatite on the front line where it was almost guaranteed he would be killed in battle. And sure enough, he was. But this is what we are. We're all a little, a little like King David in that regard. We're messed up. Most of us haven't gone that far, okay? 
But it's that same kind of thing. When we get on our knees, when we get on our face, prostrate and prostrate before God and pray and, and you know and, and say something's not right. I don't feel good. I feel bad. Well, think about people that you've offended, okay? There is a spirit out there. We are very powerful beings. And we can bring great wrath unwittingly, unknowingly upon our 